Um, yes, well, welcome to the Pure Living channel to Samardo Sibley, who is um, a master of conscious plant-based nutrition, a chef, a coach, a whole load of wonderful things. Welcome, Samardo. Thank you for coming and speaking to me. And we've talked before, but um, I think things have moved on a bit since we last spoke. And I want to hear what your views are these days about eating, conscious eating, conscious nutrition, and that sort of thing. Um, so where do you stand with the whole vegan, plant-based, organic, conscious eating movement? Wow. <laughs> That's a mouthful. Well, thanks off. Hello. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks off the bat for the invitation, Jen, because You're it's welcome. great to see you again. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, the conscious plant-based vegan kind of movement at the moment is rapidly transforming mm -hmm. at a speed I think that we never had imagined, particularly those that were the forerunners, the pioneers in this kind of movement. And, you know, the way we see things now, I mean, I was sharing not long ago that way back in 2007, if you were finding plant-based milks on a supermarket shelf, if it was a soy milk, it was like, wow, amazing. Yeah, you know, True. you go to a supermarket now. You've got a range of at least half a dozen, maybe eight or or a dozen varieties that are easily available. Mm -hmm. So the landscape has completely changed. Um, yeah. I think it's a really interesting topic. It fascinates me, um, and I'm always kind of reading up on the latest developments. But yeah. There's a lot of very good information out there. There's a lot of very good products out there. And there's a lot of people who are still spearheading the movement from a very conscious, grounded place. Not everybody is in that place. The ethics, mm. the, the, let's say the game has changed, mm. you know, um, particularly when I got into it around 2007. The people that were creating products or opening restaurants or cafes or businesses were and had actually been living that lifestyle for a very long time yeah and because of that pioneering movement a lot of other people have jumped on because they see the growth in sales um and the attraction towards living that lifestyle because it is so beneficial but if it is followed in the right way and we can talk about that and discuss that yeah yeah i was going to say in the right way because i mean what we're talking about what i'm um, all about right now is living and purifying your lifestyle as much as possible right so that includes taking into account the ethics yeah but also the environmental cost of what you're consuming in every way so pure living is about the purifying our consumption on every level of existence, what we wear, what we put into onto our bodies, everything. Um, so there are issues, aren't there, in what you might call the movement right now in terms of the effect on the environment, for one. For instance, mm -hmm. almonds. You know, we've got masses of almonds grown in California, but they take shed loads that's probably not the right word but lots of water and where does that water come from and does it deprive other areas of water yeah yeah it's a fascinating kind of part of the discussion because mm. when i said the right way mm. i was thinking about that as i was listening to you mm. and um the right way primarily is there are a lot of people that are fascinated by the the plant-based movement, the raw movement, the vegan movement, and yet the foods they're consuming are packaged, mm. processed, yeah. transported, maybe with a lot of ingredients that you wouldn't see growing in the fields, yeah. that have come from a laboratory, mm. that are replicated to behave in a way that makes them appear like they're let's say animal yeah. counterpart yeah. yeah i mean yeah. you might be you might be thinking of those burgers that 
are vegan but look just like beef burgers, for instance, um, which have been, I don't know how they're made actually, but they're, you know, it's a bit, well, I won't say the F word, the Frankenstein word, but, you know, you just yeah. think, well, why would you? Yeah. The thing is, I mean, there's lab, I mean, when they produce those fake meat products, some of it is um, made from, or basically they're working in laboratories and creating meat-like substances. We don't know how those meat-like substances that have come from a scientific laboratory are going to affect our bodies. I mean, we are really going into the space age in terms of food when we start consuming those. And if you actually look at the ingredients within those, you will not find them growing in a field. Perhaps the pea, the pea you will, which is where they get the protein. Yeah. But we don't know how those foods are going to work in the body. So if you're thinking you want to be vegan and plant-based and get on this bandwagon, amazing. Congratulations. But eat the good stuff. And the good stuff is the fruits, the vegetables, the nuts, the seeds, the superfoods, seaweeds, you know, things that are grown from the ground. And if you can, most ideally from your local environment. Yeah. Because yeah. like you said about the almonds, okay, you're vegan and you care about the planet, but that smashed avocado on toast, that avocado has taken 16 litres of water to grow. Wow, is that how much they take? Wow. 16 litres, yeah. And then it's also been shipped from South America or South Africa Peru, you know, they've been air freighted and under ripe and then ripened in chambers when they get here. So yeah. you're not eating foods in their peak, peak state. And yeah. when you look at the countries in the world where they have the centenarians and those that are living the happiest, longest lives, mm. they're connected to their local environment by eating the foods which grow around them. Yeah. You know, so there's always that question, okay, it's vegan, it's plant-based, but literally where in the world does it come from? Mm. Yeah, know? and air miles, I noticed on um, a local community page here, um, somebody mentioned getting a whole load of dirty carrots, carrots with actual soil on them which you know might be a bit of a new concept for some people who are used to buying carrots in supermarkets and you know they came out of the ground literally within about two miles of where the guy lived and that is fantastic you know that's great now i understand that people in cities don't necessarily uh, have that option they don't live near farms and they have to rely on supermarkets but let's get our supermarkets to give us a little bit more of an option, stop covering things with plastic, that sort of thing. But also, you know, I think you and I are, are, are at one over this. Just enjoy the vegetable or whatever it is, the, the, the mushroom or for what it is. Yeah. Let's not yeah. try to make it something so totally different and so very much looking like a meat product. Why bother? Would, you know, why would you bother doing that? Let's, in, let's enjoy the real thing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you are going to be eating something from nature, then you want to keep it in its most clean, unrefined, unprocessed, yeah. less played around with. You know, yeah. the more yeah. simple the ingredient is, and the more, um, what can I say, the more it's played around, the more it's played around with, and heated and deep fried and processed and God knows what else, then you're losing most of the nutrition. Mm. Exactly. And that's something that um, I was posting about only the other day, not just in terms of food, but you know, the less there is on the label, the more I'm likely to buy. Um, yeah. But you know, I, I prefer not to buy industrialized food because I think that that's one where one of our problems lies. It's the industrialization of the food industry that yeah. is an issue um yeah. and you know because you have to add things in here and there to make sure they have shelf life to make sure it looks good sitting on a shelf for who knows how long all of that kind of thing so how so then the question is how do we um how do we do that in a city and i suppose most people in the city have some way of growing food yeah. um, even on a, a balcony or on a patio 
Mm -hmm. You can even grow potatoes in a patio tub. I've done it. Um, and you can grow tomatoes. You can grow um, chilies are great if you've got a south facing patio. Uh, I can recommend that. But you can grow all sorts of other things on very little ground in pots yeah. and yeah. organically. Yeah. And the thing is, if you're actually a restaurateur living in London or your business is in London, you can, uh, a lot of the, the small independents, they're getting deliveries from the rural organic suppliers yeah. into the city, from the farms, it's straight from the ground, into the van, into the kitchens. So there is premium uh, produce arriving in central kitchens. Mm -hmm. As long as you're staying in the kind of, either the, of course, there's the very high-end Michelin-style restaurants, they have access to it. But there's also the small independent startups, mm. you know, um, that are actually supporting the growers and the producers of these foods as well. So there is premium product arriving in London. And of course, they can grow. I mean, I was looking the other day, there was a restaurant in South London and they had growing on the roofs yeah. of the restaurant. Yeah. They had boxes there, they had beehives there, you know. There's yeah. a company that's opened in the in the disused railway arches in South London, grey microgreens. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's, you know, fermentation. Restaurants are fermenting their, their foods, you yeah. know, so they're bioavailable and they're very nutritious. Yeah. So there's lots of ways that we can use the food without relying on this industrialised system. Mm. Because that industrialised system was created generally for cheap food for the masses yeah you know and you know when I was growing up you know you had luxury foods that maybe you had once a week yeah or maybe less than yeah. that maybe once a month or once a year but yeah. there were certain foods that were out of reach for most people most of the time absolutely now there aren't those you don't see those I know you know, because everything, because of the consum the consumption's gone up, so the demand's gone up, the supply needs to go up as well. And when the supply goes up, the, the standards of how that is grown or reared or treated drops. Yeah. And I mean, a classic, isn't it, is strawberries all year round. We used yeah. to, um, I'm sounding like a, you know, really old person here now, but it used to be that strawberries had a season. And out of that season, you didn't eat strawberries. Yeah, yeah. You know, same, yeah. same with all fruit, you know, but now we seem to be able to get fruit all year round. And somebody mentioned to me recently that the apple that you buy in the supermarket is probably about a year old or more because they've been stored that long. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't really want to eat a year old apple. There's probably nothing particularly wrong with it, but I'm not entirely convinced that there's anything particularly right with it either because nutrients you know they they um disappear over time what yeah. you want is something fresh recently picked yeah. I, mean, I was I, I was astonished when i heard that apparently it's common practice for for apples to be stored for over a year yeah i yeah i mean it's really interesting because the way that I know and I am hearing of initiatives, particularly in cities at the moment, where they're getting the younger generation or the children back into kitchens again so that they can train yeah. them and teach them the That's values right. of cooking. Because some famous actor the other day quoted that if you really want to raise your self-esteem, get into the kitchen because really? cooking for yourself. <laughs> That's great, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It nurtures that sense of well-being because mm. you're self-nurturing. Um, yeah. and the food that you eat that's seasonal is nutritionally far higher for you than anything like an apple that's picked a year previous and then stored is going to be exactly. it's fiber yeah. it's got some, you know it's got fiber and it's got some flavor mm. but when you look at you know i'm, I'm going to go back kind of 15 years when i was studying macrobiotics mm. everything was seasonal yeah. and that's how our ancestors used to eat yeah so they will be preserving by salting and curing and pickling and fermenting mm -hmm. and 
drying and yeah most recently i say most recently probably in 50 to 100 years you'd be freezing yeah so you know nan would make the jam when the raspberries and the, the yeah. apples were at the end of their season yeah. and that would see you through the winter yeah and then you have the root vegetables and a lot of creativity mm. or i find a lot of creativity sometimes is not by having a million different things to choose from in the kitchen mm. it's like okay there's carrots mm. or it's celeriac or it's yeah. parsley how many things can you create yeah with what is around now because also financially you're going to be so much better off yeah because yes. it's a lot yeah. to eat yes and i know that you um, use superfoods a lot um yeah. and uh they can be expensive, can't yeah. they? So yeah. the thing is, though, if we eat fresh local food, we're comp You know, we we don't need so much in terms of the superfoods. I think that's my thought. Anyway, I don't know if you agree with me on that. Superfoods are yeah. great if you have um, imbalances or if you need to really boost yourself. Yeah. Um, but we don't necessarily need them all the time if we're eating well. Yeah, because sometimes it's funny you mention that because I know people that are eating a raw vegan diet or they're eating a predominantly plant based diet or paleo. Yeah. And on paper, from the book, mm. from the left brain linear thinking, reading this text, you're ticking all the boxes because you've got that food inside your body. Yeah. But unless all the other areas of your life are balanced, oh, you can't true. just pick up that book and say, yeah. right, I'm going to cook all of that guy's or that girl's recipes. Now I'm going to get that same youthful glow and that mm -hmm. positive, happy life. Mm -hmm. It's about having all the areas covered. And superfoods are of benefit. And, yeah. you know, you've got maca that they're using to treat depression with as opposed to Prozac. Yeah. Um, which is a phenomenal route, mm -hmm. but then it's going back to the education, like when we were talking about the children going back into schools mm. and passing on the wisdom of our ancestors so that these skills can be carried on. Yeah. Because in the UK, if, if it's a UK audience listening today, you know, we've got things like the aronia berry yeah. and that has three times more antioxidant than the blueberry. Yeah. And they're very easy to grow. We've yeah. got sea, sea buckthorn. Sea buckthorn. There's some just outside this office, I have to tell you. Absolutely. Yeah. Grab yourself some because <laughs> that is... <laughs> Don't worry, I have done. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's, you know, we're spoiled because, you know, whether it's raw cacao or maca or any of the other superfoods, most of, the com most of them are coming from overseas. Yeah. But we also have, you know, Maybe in a few weeks' time, we're going to have the wild garlic shooting up. Oh, it will be soon, yeah. And just before we go on, sea buckthorn, by the way, very, very high in vitamin C, isn't it? It's very, very yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah, it's so good. And, you know, with all these um, things that we need to do to keep our immunity really strong right now, yeah, um, that is another reason for us needing to eat highly nutritious foods. Yeah. And whatever is happening outside in life right now um it's about staying strong and it's yeah. about staying healthy and trying to get out of the supermarket and into your farmer's markets yeah and into your local environment and see what's growing there yeah. that's that's really the key because you're going to feel a lot better yeah. because it's like if you want to, if you arrive in a, in a location when you're traveling and you've got jet lag, mm. one of the things that helps alleviate that and get the system back in is by having the honey of the local bees. Yeah. The bees are having, or they hold the frequency of the environment. They've created mm. the honey. Mm. And it's the same for us. If we're eating the foods mm. then we're much more adaptable to our local environment and changing circumstances yeah absolutely yeah no absolutely and that really is part of the philosophy of, of uh, the pure place um which is my website and um, blog 
and pure living. It's about simplifying and purifying our lives in all the different ways. And you touched on a few of the other ways as well in terms of what else we're doing in our lives to empower ourselves and make ourselves, you know, make sure that we are well, more than well, you know, really healthy and happy. So now I want to move on and just talk a little bit more about how, you know, people are listening to this, watching this and they're saying, well, it's all very well, but you know, where do I start? Maybe. Um, and I don't know what to do. And that's all very well. So the thing is you offer classes, don't you? So people can be coached by you. Um, they can come and join a class and you can show them how to, to prepare foods and talk about the, the different kinds of food and what they do for you. Yeah. Yeah. So that's one way. I mean, sure. I offer all of the above. Um, <laughs> and I love doing what I do mm. and I love sharing that so that then people can go on and then feel empowered and healthier, yeah. happy and stronger. And that's my driver, mm. you know, because it, the food is something that we do three times a day, mm. sometimes more, sometimes less. Yeah. And everything that we put inside is going to have an effect yes. on how we think and feel mm -hmm. and our energy. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of information out there. There's lots on the internet and there's lots of books Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there's lots of television programs, although I don't watch television, but mm. I've heard that there are. Um, so if somebody is starting and doesn't know where to begin, I would recommend having a look online, seeing where there are courses, yeah. not just in cooking, but in nutrition. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. and connect with other, but the other, the thing is, it's about community as well. That's the thing with lo eating in our local environment. We mm -hmm. go to farmer's markets, mm -hmm. chat with the grower, even in cities. Yeah. Um, and we can go to, uh, farms where they're growing produce that creates community. It creates a connection between you and where your foods come from. Yeah. So if people sign up to do a class or a workshop. You're also going to be with another, with other people who are also keen to learn, and that's a very good starter. Because when I first went to a class back in two thousand and seven in England, mm. it was like wow. It was just like I'm so happy that I'm not the only one thinking like this. Yeah, yeah. Because it's about connection, and yeah. um, and then you share stories, and and people have resources that that they want to to share with you as well so you know where to keep going and maybe they give you a tip for a magazine or a book or a recipe yeah um yeah yeah absolutely and community is really important i think and i think this is one of the areas where the internet like this i mean um you're based in somerset i should say and i'm in scotland right now on the east coast but, you know, the internet allows us to spread the word. It allows us to get together. Um, it allows us to keep in touch and, and, and inform and get the word out, which I think is great. Um, that's one kind of community, but the, 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 in, another important uh, kind of community is actually one-to-one -one talking to people, like you say. I mean, I'm always talking to people at farmer's markets. I'm always talking to producers and talking to them about their their foods that they're or their product that they're selling and asking asking them the story behind it how do they produce it where does it come from so that i know yeah um and i also have this connection with the grower stroke producer uh it's not just pulling something off a supermarket shelf checking the label well, they're not everybody does that. I'm a bit of a labels queen, as you know, uh, checking the label and making sure that it doesn't have anything too terrible in it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, another it's a very thing, different uh, thing. It's a very different way of living. It's a very different way of living. Um, because the thing is the art of eating and it is an art mm. because if you are really present with the food that you're eating, yeah. because a lot of people have certain health issues mm -hmm. and, or, yeah, there's a lot of the population with a 
serious health issues. Yeah. And the thing is, because everything is speeding up, or we think it's speeding up because of the internet, yeah. then what you're doing, what people are doing is they're kind of trying to cram five minutes mm. of eating into their day to sustain them, but then they wonder why they don't have the energy or they've got digestive issues or, you know, the, the you know, lethargic or a whole host of other complaints. Mm. It's like if we look at some of the cultures like Southeast Asia, mm. They would, they would never eat on their own. Yeah. They would always put time aside yeah. for yeah. the meal times. Yeah. They would always share their food. Yeah. And then when that part of the day is done, then it continues in mm -hmm. Spain or Italy. Well, Spain, it would be the siesta. Yeah. You would eat. And you would eat together as a group. Mm -hmm. But, you know, not only um, our relationship with food, but the way in which we're eating, because... The, the tradition of eating together as a family or mm. tradition of eating together as a group mm. is getting less and less. Yeah. You know, dining rooms are kind of making their way outside of the home to bring in the home cinema. Yeah. People are just yeah. eating while they're trying to do a load of other things at the same time. Yeah. And they're swallowing the food and they're not getting the nutrition from it. And then you wonder why you don't feel so good. Yeah, or eating on the move. You know, they're yeah. not sitting down, they're walking. Yeah. You know, or, or drinking a cup of coffee while they're walking. Um, and then you wonder why you have an issue at the end of the yeah. day. is because you haven't, you know, you, you haven't been treating your body with the respect it deserves, actually, is, is, is part of the issue here. Yeah. I mean, I think it's really, I think that's absolutely right. Um, and again, it's part of that simplifying life and just saying, no, hang on a second. No, I'm, I've got to look after my body and mm -hmm. make and make sure that I'm just, you know, getting back to basics and looking after myself. Um, yeah. Self-care and self-care leads to self-empowerment as well. So we become more empowered when we actually take the time for ourselves. Yeah. It's a simple way yeah. of putting it, but you know, you, you know where I'm coming from on that. Um, so yeah, and for you, uh, there's no there's no barrier to uh, anybody trying all this kind of stuff. People say, oh, it's very expensive. It's very expensive to eat organic. It's very expensive to eat this. It's very expensive to eat that. And I know that last year, you were one of the chefs at uh, Royal Ascot with um, Raymond Blanc, um, providing plant-based food at Ascot, which some would say was very elitist, but why not make sure that, you know, people like that have, um, you know, they have uh, access to plant-based food as well. Yeah. So um, somebody's just um, set off a printer here in the office. So excuse the noise there. Um, <laughs> but um, uh, it will stop in a minute, I hope. Maybe. You can't, I can't hear it. Oh, can't you? Oh, that's all right then. You could hear that. That was the that was the paper yeah, falling yeah. down on the floor. Um, but um, yeah, there's really uh, there there really isn't any barrier, is there? Uh, because you don't have to spend loads and loads of money. No, I mean, I was I was very fortunate in two thousand and eight because I was living in India for a year, mm. and I didn't see anything labelled raw or vegan no. or no. plant based. Mm. It was food. Yeah. And I didn't have a choice not to eat meat. It just wasn't available where I was living. Yeah. And because of the incredible food that I saw not only grown, but for sale, but made into beautiful dishes in restaurants, mm. the taste and the flavor of it far excelled anything that I'd eaten in my Michelin star days back in those kitchens with animal products. Yeah. And um, it was cheap. It's very, very cheap. I mean, if you're going to go down a road of um, buying expensive superfoods online and creating a lot of the very decadent recipes, mm. then sure, you're going to spend some money. Mm. But kilo for kilo, well, a kilo of shelled hemp seed or a kilo of rice or a 
you know, kilos of potatoes. Red lentils, even. Red lentils. Red lentils. Yeah. It does it in, you know, the Indian food I was eating, if you make something like a really good dal with coconut and tamarind and it's mm -hmm. served with some nice pilau rice, mm -hmm. it is absolutely divine. Absolutely. And it's so cheap. It's yeah. probably one of the cheapest foods that you can eat. Yeah, I, and, and one of my favourite things is dal, I have to say. Um, very easy to make and very cheap yeah. and so tasty. Yeah, yeah I know. So, no barrier really to eating consciously, healthily, plant-based. Not everybody sticks to a plant-based diet, and I get that. But in terms of consciousness, what I say, and you may well agree or not, um, I say look for non-plant food that is ethically and consciously reared and, yeah. and handled. Um, and there are a lot of places which are beginning to understand that factory farming is a no-no when it comes to animals. It really is. It's, it's horrendous. Um, so, you know, if you can't go down the plant-based route, fine. But let's choose something which is a little bit more ethical and conscious. Um, and more and more farmers are beginning to go that way, which is fabulous to see. Yeah, it's brilliant because you just reminded me, Jen, that um, there is huge momentum behind a plant-based and the vegan movement at the moment. And mm -hmm. if some people don't feel like they want to embrace that, mm -hmm. they might feel alienated or yeah. isolated or thinking there's something wrong with them and there's not. Yeah. It's not for everybody. And what I've tried to do is not preach it like a religion because we've got enough rules of what to do and what we can't do. It's like, try it out. Yeah. But when you try it out, you don't have to be that hard on yourself and smash yourself because you're not eating three meals a day. Yeah. If you're going to be eating the animal product, choose um, organic, yeah. biodynamic, yeah. free range, yeah. rare breed, yeah. get to know the farmer, go yeah. to the farm, select <laughs> it. Absolutely. And use that, and use that as the condiment. Yeah. So the the small part of the meal. Yeah. And then start getting sexy with the recipes with your vegetables, mm. so that you have that component, mm. but you're getting creative with with the vegetables and the plant ingredients as yeah. well. That's a lovely way. That's a lovely way to get started on it. Yeah, because too often yeah. the vegetables are an afterthought on yeah. the plate, aren't they? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a great is, way to, yeah. Because it's quality, it, it's quality, not quantity. Exactly. And yeah, yeah I think we're going to go back to that avocado thing as well. You know, it's 16 litres of water for an avocado mm. shipped from South America. Mm. And you, you've got somebody, a farmer, producing very good products 15 miles down the road that's in love with his business. Yeah. You know, have a look at that and research that too, because that could be really beneficial. Yeah. And, you know, touching on the plant-based, what we don't want, and which is a way that it could go, is that we don't want a global monoculture Absolutely. where the only crops grown are hybridized soy and hybridized crops, yeah. because, you know, these seedless varieties mm. of, of fruits and vegetables, yeah. They're not good. You know, we've got 400, over 400 varieties of apples in the UK. Yeah. And that's dwindling down because the supermarkets only want two or three because yeah. they'll sit in the gas chamber for a year before they go in plastic bags. Yeah. So, you know, um, it's, yeah, it's just, I mean, the great thing is it's lifting the veil off and people yeah. are seeing how food is produced, whatever you're eating. Yeah. Um, but if you really want to go down the plant-based vegan route, just really do some research as to who's been doing it for a long period of time, um, who has integrity and who is ethical mm -hmm. and kind of monitor and look at what they're doing. Are they conscious consumers, you know, in all areas? Mm -hmm. Are they um, actively uh, being of service as well yeah. as creating something that benefits other people um, and not just business 
yes in priority yeah exactly exactly um yeah they they actually have more than just pounds shillings and pence and oh, that's a bit old but you know pounds and pence um in their eyes that they're, they're actually they actually care about what they're doing and they have a real passion yeah. for it as well yeah yeah they're Post loving it mm. they're loving it and they're living it and uh do the research because the thing is if you are going into that arena of plant-based or vegan and you've got some health issues you want to address if you don't do it correctly mm. then you could stumble later on down the track Absolutely. and you know it's um yeah it's just doing a bit of groundwork prevention rather than cure well i think that's brilliant advice and i have really enjoyed chatting with you again today thank you so much if there was one thing that you wanted to say that you haven't um, said already about um this conscious way of eating is there anything that you you want to add to to what you've already said i mean i think we've covered it really well i, but think I don't know if there's anything we've missed out uh i think that's been a really good chat that we've had <laughs> <laughs> well i've enjoyed it i mean you know yeah. I, I don't know I, I i think we've covered a lot of ground and i think it's been great and i'm really grateful thank you um yeah. because you know it, it is the way we, i i passionately believe it's the way we need to go in terms of just being conscious about what we eat and and trying to let go well not trying to but letting go of the industrialization notion that everything has to be you know um have millions of ingredients if you looked at the ingredients in a packet of biscuits lately i mean my you know really the mind boggles and you just think well what are these things i mean this isn't actually food you know it's not actually food. so it's getting away from all of that it's it's really simplifying getting away from the industrialized uh, food process and saying and, and actually realizing the benefit of it because it tastes better it does yeah. you more good um, then, yeah. yeah there was one thing i was just going to drop in as well because you asked me if there's something else and listening yeah. to what you're reading on labels yeah if you are working in the city and you're balancing family life and you've got a busy career and mm -hmm. you don't have a lot of time mm -hmm. if you are in the city you will find juice bars you will find places where you can yeah. get uh prepared vegetables yeah try and get as much nutrition into your body because you can grab a juice quickly yeah you can grab some carrot sticks and some hummus and some guacamole you know there's lots of things that are available to get the nutrition inside your body if you're time poor yeah. you know and you're feeling really pressured Absolutely. that's another way there's yeah. nothing wrong with eating a raw carrot is there <laughs> well, I mean, seriously i mean you know it, it can Not be yet. that simple a raw carrot yeah. is really good for you uh, yeah. the other day actually um yeah. and enjoyed it greatly yeah yeah so anything that you're going to get raw inside your body it could if you're time poor grab salad ingredients when you come yeah. home from work in a bowl nice dressing mm. easy done yeah yeah it doesn't have to be hard and i think no. that's that, that's one of the things that people have to get over this idea that it's so complicated it doesn't have to be um doesn't. it's just simplifying everything just simplify everything and yeah. it's quite easy brilliant really? Samado, thank you so much that's thank you so much absolutely wonderful and uh one day i'll be back down in somerset again and i'll pop in and have some of your food if i may brilliant look forward to it <laughs> all right thanks a lot